living by your essential nature is the way to fruition. Very early along the spiritual path, when I was about 10 or 10, I inquired from my grandmother, what is my religion? She told me, your religion is the same as that of God. Immediately, this is not an answer, a question comes, what is the religion of God? But that is my religion. When I inquired further, what is the religion of God? I was told, you ask too many questions. This sows the seed of introspection. If the intensity is strong enough, this leads to the process of introspection. What is the religion? Religion means the essential nature. A nature by which something is known. Water is known by its qualities. Crystal clear. It has quality to quench your thirst. It has the quality to give you nourishment. Along that line, the process of introspection began. There is nothing, water is the only thing of its kind. It does not resemble anyone. Although it is in liquid form, no other liquid form can replace water and your body is composed of 70% of water. It comes from that. That which is that which is existential is one. Oneness. The first quality. Oneness means we are all part of one harmony. Water, wherever it comes from, it has the same quality. Whether you get the water in India, North America, South America, Europe, Australia, wherever you get, it has the same quality to quench your thirst. It has same quality, it has oneness, it has omnipresence. Then, what is the next quality? That is the existential sound. When everything quietens, there is a sound that permeates through the entire cosmos. Now, even the scientists say when the sun is moving or it's moving, there is a humming sound. And they say that this sound resembles the sound of the Hindu symbol Om. This is the nature of the sound. Then it is said in all the scriptures that we are composed of light. Light is our another quality or essential nature. Then this light is the only doer that does everything. In it, it acts as a catalyst, it does not do anything on its own, but in its presence everything happens. The only good. When this comes to interact with your humans, the intellect, body and mind, Actions arise. And the entire process begins. So this is your essential nature. When the people who have experienced this oneness, this light, this 
capacity to quench the inner thirst, they went to different parts of the world. They spread their message, and out of that, many other religions evolved. But this is your essential nature. We forget this. We do not live in that essential nature. And instead of that, we start living in the religion of the others. Hinduism is not a religion, Christianity is not a religion, Islam is not a religion as it is considered. The light, the way it happened, experienced by all those who have lived in their essential nature. When you look at the various mythologies, scriptures, you will find many similarities. In Greek mythology, the Helen of Troy and the person who it was said that he will be the cause of the destruction. In the same way in Hindu mythology, in Mahabharat, when Duryodhan was born, it is said he will be the cause of the destruction of the entire kingdom. There are many similarities because the message, when it comes from oneness, from one, just as the internet facility is one, it depends on what you are using that facility. Someone may turn on a Sufi music, other may turn on a Chinese music, someone may turn on some movies, someone else may turn on the blue movies. It all depends on individual what you use that facility for. It can do many things. And when you are living in your essential nature, the light begins to manifest through various instruments of humus, body, mind and intellect. Understanding is born and understanding of each one of you differs from the other. If this understanding is correct, it changes the, it has the capability to change the situation it has the capacity to bring about a change in the person and bring transformation. But what happens? We are not living in our nature. It is something like a battery that has two poles. The positive current comes from its source. And the negative current comes from the body of the car. And no system works without battery, whether it's your laptop, whether it is your car or anything else. Everything works with a battery which have two poles, positive and negative. The positive pole is full of energy. Negative supports it. It is generated from within the system. In car battery, the negative pole, negative energy comes from the body itself. Positive is not the source of the body. It comes from outside. This positive force is it comes from the essential nature and understanding of the light, that oneness. That when it begins to interact with the negative pole that is generated there, it brings awareness. It brings understanding. 
But what it is happening? What are these negative aspects? The anger, jealousy, hatred, all these act as negative poles when they become dominant. Misery, unhappiness, a breakdown in relations comes. But when you come in the company of someone whose battery is charged, you use the other battery to charge your battery. What are the ways to charge this battery? The one way to charge this battery is keep the battery in movement. Keep it in use. When you are using the, the balance between the positive and negative and both neutralize one another, the movement, the journey begins. And once you start in the process of sharing your love, your understanding, your awakening, the process continues and battery remains, continues to charge on its own. But when it gets discharged completely because of not being taken care of the battery the way it is, there is a breakdown with the positive current. Then the battery has to be connected to some other source for it to get charge. The masters are the ones whose battery is always charged. And when you come in the company, something of that is rubbed on to you. It happened there comes an incident in one of the Hindu scriptures called Ramayana, where there it is a story of Ram the hero, who is considered to be the incarnation of one of the Hindu trinity, and Ravan, the embodiment of negative force. Ram, the embodiment of the positive force, both are necessary. Ravan has kidnapped the beloved, the wife of Ram. If someone takes your near and dear thing or kidnaps it, can you maintain a composure or would you be able to have any kind of communion with that person? No, certainly not. Because you have not experienced the oneness, although the two poles, the positive and negative, seems to be separate from one another, but somewhere they are connected to one another. Two people are staying in one room, one is sharing a single space, the air space, a single ground space, breathing the same air, sharing the same flow, yet still are antagonistic to one another. This is the absence of that core factor of oneness, that there is only oneness. We call it God. But in the absence of proper understanding, we say my God is different than your God. But there is only oneness, nothing else. The water, whether it is from your house or my house, it has the same quality to quality thirst. When you check its pH value, its quality will remain the same. He wants to perform a ritual before entering for the war. He needed a priest to carry on that worship. He sends one of his messengers to Ravan to ask him to perform this 
this ritual for Ram, he sends Hanuman to do that. Hanuman goes and Ram told him to go to Ravan because he is, although on the surface he belongs to the demonic clan, but deep down he is a very learned, he is playing a role on the screen because of certain actions this particular situation has come in that two of them who were intimate friends devotees are now standing as enemies to one another this is the situation we face um, some time ago your spouse was your best friend very loving now circumstance and situation has changed, much water has flown under the river and they stand as opponents to one another. This is the situation that happens. Hanuman goes, when he reaches the court of Ravan, he says, Ram, the incarnation of Vishnu wants you to come to officiate this particular ritual for him. Ravan refuses. Hanuman returns and tells Ram that he has refused to come. He, Ram looks towards his younger brother and asks him to go. Lakshman thinks that when Hanuman could not do, how can I convince Ravan to come and do the perform officiate this ritual for Ram? Ram read that question, so he asked Hanuman, "How did you request Ravan?" He said, "When I went to his court, I welcomed him. I said." Bhagwan Ram, the incarnation of Vishnu, wants you to perform this ritual for him. He said that is not the way. When you go to a particular person, you have to give a certain amount of respect to him. You are going to receive something. You have to be a receiver. Receiver has a certain quality. When you check your receiver in any system, it has to have a certain quality when there is an inertia. Then you cannot receive the signals. So Lakshman asked Ram, can you teach me the way how to address him? He said, when you go, you say to him, Om. King of Lanka, the wise among the wisest, the learned, the devotee of Lord Shiva, well versed in all the scriptures and understanding, the forest dweller Ram humbly requests you to help him fulfill this ritual that he wants to perform. And he wants you to officiate that. When you speak to someone with so much of humility, there is no air of arrogance. As it was in the case of Hanuman, who went earlier. Ravan immediately consented and yes, I will come. He comes, he performs, officiates the ritual. And according to when the Hindu priest comes to officiate the ritual, there is a way to give him an offering. So Ram asked, What can I offer you as my offering to you for me, or for officiating this ritual? At this, Ravan laughed and he said, You do not have anything. What can you offer me? Ram said, I may not have anything now. 
But whatever you ask me, I will certainly give it to you. Now, Ravan says, if you want to give me something, give me a blessing that your good qualities, your way of life should not change my ways and means. The company changes the things. You are an iron metal and you are in the company of the magnet, then the quality of the magnet will change your entire life. It will give you the quality of magnetism. So he said, I do not want to be influenced by your goodness, nature, and all these things. I want to remain as it is. So such is the quality of the association. This we call it as the Hindus call it satsang. He did not want to change because he knew that this is the only way for him to attain to salvation. This towards the positive side and halfway towards the negative side. You are neither the embodiment of negativities nor the embodiment of positivities in a limbo. Ravan was extreme manifestation of negativities and Ram the extreme manifestation of positivities. There was no change. How does a man of awakening, how does a man whose battery is fully charged, how does he work? He looks at every circumstance and situation, whoever he is dealing with, whether it is wife or husband or friend or a worker or a discreet, Every moment the circumstance and situation comes in life. And that time, if you are guided by your essential nature that I am part of one harmony, there is only oneness, the same current that flows in me, the same current flows in her. You are overflowing love. You will overlook just as many times you overlook the mistakes, the wrongdoings of your children because you know they are innocent. You have that capacity but it does not happen when it comes to the others. You are not living in your essential nature. It happened many times, I gave many dimensions of this story Swami Vivekananda in 1893 went to Chicago to attend the Parliament of Religions. He was not the official representative of Hinduism, but somehow he got the entry. It happened there was a meeting where all the custodians, they have decided to test Vivekananda. They put all the scriptures on the shelf and Bhagavad Gita they put the lowest. First Bhagavad Gita and on top they put Bible. And he said in an insulting tone that your scripture Bhagavad Gita is outdated. It has no relevance in the present moment. The latest scripture is Bible and that is on top. Had it been Muslims, jihad would become that you are disrespecting my religion, jihad. If it was any other ignorant custodian of Hindu religion, he would immediately call a press conference there has to be an inter respect for each other's religion and maybe many kind of roids, the newspapers, the media, 
will show that these people are disrespecting the religion, the religious scripture of the others. If Vivekananda's battery was not charged, his battery was charged. His work was to bring about transformation in the others. He has to act differently. He has to act in totality that I am part of one self harmony and somehow the other there is a corrosion in the terminal of this person that's why a proper contact is not being made sometimes it happens your battery one pole is not because of corrosion there is no contact the moment there is corrosion contact is lost the balance is not maintained, the battery will not, the two poles will not create the momentum for the vehicle to move. He simply smiled at the ignorance of the people and he said, Thank you very much for giving respect to my scripture and to me. What would you think? Those people whose whole intention was to bring down Vivekananda, said this is a really a fool, he does not know that we are respecting him or insulting him. He does not know the difference between insult and respect. We are insulting him and he is thanking us. He is a really an ignorant one. Then gently Vivekananda went to the shell, he pulled out Bhagavad Gita from below, as he pulled out all the other scriptures fell on the ground. Then he addressed, he said, thank you very much for making Bhagavad Gita as the foundation of all religions. Just as if you remove the foundation which remains hidden in a building, but the entire structure rests on the soundness of the foundation. The foundation is not the strong of a building it can crumble any time. The foundation of all the religions is that essential religion which is the core of Bhagavad Gita, which is the very essence of the message of Bhagavad Gita. That your religion is that of God. This is the essential religion. When my grandmother said your religion is the same as that of God, when I introspected, I realized what is the religion of God. Oneness, the quality of omnipresence, irrespective of who is there in front of me, whether I know that person or not. Sun never differentiates between a criminal and a politician or a sacred person. It gives its light equally to all those who are vulnerable to it, who is open to it. This is omnipresence. Whereas you as an individual, you will discriminate who you give this and who you don't. Do not want to give. But godliness or that which we call God does not differentiate between everything. And that is oneness, that is omnipresence. And if you understand this, you can attain, if you understand that oneness of the sun, you can enjoy the fruits, the light of the sun, you can enjoy its light when it is free of UV rays, you can nourish your body, you can get the vitamin D that is required for the sustenance of the body, you can do anything that is needed, it can remove any kind of germs and so, that is why when we take the fruits, it is sun-like. 
the fruits cannot grow cannot ripe unless the two poles the light of the sun and the light of the moon work in harmony with one another one gives it its ripeness the other gives it a sweetness and with the combination of the two the light of the sun and the moon the fruits ripen and give you a unique taste the two are essential for walking this is oneness this is your essential nature and if you are living in that you are living in the image of god in the moon the light the light has no name christianity has a name its preceptor is different but the reason was that the people who have studied in one university maybe in the field of medicine or engineering a class of 14 students they get scattered into different universities different circumstances different situations different group of people they are teaching the same medicine pathology anatomy physiology or whatever be their field of specialization but when they are teaching into teaching to different groups their examples their narrations will be different but they are not teaching different things if you go to the essence to the core you will realize that the message of jesus the message of buddha the message of holy prophet the message of vivekan carries the same spark whether you take the water these days the, the bottled water comes in different brands because one company cannot provide the water in all the countries drinking water in america there are different internet providers there are different systems of electricity and things like these does it mean that the internet service provided by AT&T or Verizon differ from one another it is that different people are providing the similar service their outer things may be different but deep down they have one IP technology internet provider technology Jesus only profit they are all different brands providing the same thing but we go on the outer surface we remain on the surface where there is a conflict we never go deep we can we never live in our essential nature now this is known as living in the religion of the others not in the religion that you were born you were born with an innocence you were you could as a child you could smile even with a bandit with a dagger with a knife in his hand but then as an adult you will not do that a child is full of innocence for what is but an adult you supposed to continue that trend of innocence that you were born with but somewhere along the line we lose it and then many things happen so first and the foremost thing is this you have to return the source your essential nature and when you are living in your essential nature then your actions can abide you if you understand that one day the same spouse i have loved her so much that i was ready to fight with the entire universe with her but you remember two individuals are different in nature different 
in outer appearances and deep down they are seen. When this understanding comes and you are interrupted, your actions cannot bring any kind of inertia. They will bring bliss and harmony. They will bring happiness to you. But if contrary is the case, then the same interaction will bring disturbance in you, unhappiness. And then you are seeking the help here and there and you will not find it. You have to find the seek the help deep within you. Yes, it happens when you come in the company of one whose battery is fully charged. You do a jump keep, jump start. And with jump start, when your battery remains on, always sharing your presence, sharing your understanding, sharing your love in myriad ways, you can choose what appeals to you the most and share your love, understanding, awakening with anyone that you meet. You will feel a different kind of energy surging. Your, your batteries is in continuous use. It will not get discharged. This is the way of a spiritual person. How to keep your battery always fully charged. When it is fully charged, it has the capacity first to change any situation if you are fully charged. What did Vivekananda did? He changed the situation that was going against him. He changed the situation when the others realized that I cannot get this man angry or disrespect him in any way. He simply understood that these people were ignorant, they know not what they are saying. Father, forgive them, they know not what they are doing, was the message of Jesus. Do we understand, do we learn anything from the message of Jesus? Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. Does anything like this come to you when you are interacting with your spouse, your friends, or anyone in the street, any situation? First it changes the situation, then it changes, brings, sows the seed of transformation in the other, and the, as the outcome of that, bliss, Overflows. You are sharing your presence in the form of words. What I am doing, I am not teaching you any scripture, any zikr, anything. Simply sharing with you something which is very simple, practical, that each one of you can do. It has nothing to do if you can read, understand the Islamic verses or the sutras of Bhagavad Gita, then this is here, none of these actions, this is the entire the teaching of Bhagavad Gita, where your actions, now if you are angry and you are acting out of distorted battery, it may create fire. But that will cause damage to you and to the property. Never interact with someone when you are in anger or anything. That time, postponing your anger for a few minutes, bringing all the understanding, that time remembering your zikr is not going to help. Introspection is the first thing that is required. Then witnessing. 
Witnessing is the key, the essence of all the techniques of the religion. In Vigyan Bhairav Tantra, which is considered to be the complete treatise of map on meditation, it contains 112 techniques of meditation which was given by the by Shiva, the part of the Hindu Trinity, to his concept. 112 techniques of meditation. No technique of meditation can lie outside that. And the essential core of each of these techniques is witnessing. When anger is coming, you are witnessing that where the anger is coming from, just as what you do when your back car is not starting, what do you do? When you tumble, you realize the light of the battery is coming off. Immediately you know there is something discontinuity with the battery. You immediately make a check. You check if the terminals are tight enough. If not, then you see if there is corrosion. This is known as witnessing. Each one of us do this. But when it comes to inner life, we forget this word witnessing. Why am I getting angry with my spouse? Why it is happening? If you start witnessing that, introspecting that, you will find the solution yourself. That there is somewhere of the corrosion into it. Remove the corrosion and put on the terminal and the car will start and you can continue your journey. The battery that was not charging because of that discontinuity, because of that corrosion, begins to charge once again. Introspection, witnessing. Introspection is the process through which you analyze the situation. And witnessing is the way that you look into the situation in the light of your essential nature or your essential religion and when this begins to happen life moves in a totally different dimension this is the dimension of the inner the dimension of the awakened ones such should be the way of our understanding in our life